I'd like to talk to you about the right way for street preachers to handle police officers. I have a little bit of experience in this matter. I will show you here in a minute or two. But this controversy came out 12 days ago um, about this young teenager, and he was arrested for preaching at a, uh, I guess it was a some kind of drag queen reading to children trying to destroy their brain, brains thing or something, whatever. And um, he got arrested. So let's watch the video first, and I will uh, tell you what he did wrong here. Let's continue. Another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you Okay, now he's, uh, right here he is, and you can see here just a, a minute ago, um, this police officer comes up behind him. This, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And he puts his hand on his shoulder, okay? And there's another police officer coming up from the front here. They don't have the wide angle of an actual video camera. It's a stupid cell phone thing. Uh, that's problem number one, okay? If you're going to go out and you're going to do this type of stuff, make sure you have really good cameras that are set up, not just a little cell phone thing because you're not catching the whole thing there. Secondly, the police officer comes up, taps him on the shoulder, and he keeps on reading. From the Bible, right? I don't, and I'm not sure. It, I, I can't tell if it's the King James Bible or not. But again, if it's not the King James Bible, you're reading from a Vatican version. You don't have the Holy Spirit there to back you up. There's no power there. But he taps you on the shoulder. Stop what you're doing and turn and address the officer. Don't just keep reading like you're disobeying or like a disobedient little child that you know, mommy and daddy tell you to, you know, uh, come down for supper. Well, I won't. I can't right now. You know, being a little sarcastic here. But be a man. Here comes a police officer. Okay, I'll get back to this in a minute and confront the police officer. All right? It's a very important thing to do. Let's continue. But if you bite and devour one another. See, he's saying stop, and he just keeps on reading. Stop what you're doing. Address the issue with the police officer. Speak to him like a man. Look him in the eyes and deal with the situation. Don't just keep going and doing what you're doing. Beware lest you be consumed by one another. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Okay, hey, what are you doing? He grabs the the mic. Okay. Um now, let's think about this from the police officer's perspective. The other officer is there tapping him, saying, Hey, can we talk? You know, can, saying things to him. He's not listening. All right. The officer has to come up and say, okay, if, if this officer came up and took the mic away, if he would have just stood there and tried to talk, do you think he would have stopped reading from the Bible? No, he wouldn't have. Again, see, it's, oh, but he's stopping you reading from the Bible. So he's going against the scriptures. Just handle the situation like a man. Deal with it. Look at the police officer in the face and talk to him man to man. I realize he's a teenager. You know, he's not really a fully grown adult male yet, but you know, that's how you have to do these things. What are you doing? What is the problem? What's wrong? What are you doing? You didn't give him any warning. You just grabbed the mic. No, this is the same one that we had here. Yeah, that was in there. It was not out here. Okay. He says, this is the same one that was here before. And the, and the other teenager right here, he says, well, that was in there. It's not out here. Okay. Now let me just address something else. Sound amplification. Do you have any scripture for being able to do that? No, you don't. What is the point of amplifying your voice so that you can get over top of what is going on with the perverts over there that you're trying to protest against? You're trying to get them, you're trying to make problem, problems here, trouble there. Right? There's no sound amplification in here. You speak with your regular voice. Um, a man of God will speak with a loud voice. Um, that's a mark of the Holy Spirit, by the way. It's a whole other study I could get into. But uh, George Whitfield, uh, the preacher back in the 1700s, he was known to have a very loud speaking voice. And he would go out and there was a lot of contention and things. And he did have run-ins with the law back then in his day. Um, but George Whitfield was preaching at one point in time. And Benjamin Franklin walked and he was one mile away. And he could still hear George Woodfield. 
said about that. He paced off one mile and he said, I could still hear what he was saying. Um, you don't need a PA system, right? What you can do is you can come out and you can have your King James Bible out. Make sure that you're holding the Bible, not just some app on your phone or something like that. You need to hold the power of a King James Bible. So very important. That's where the power is at. The new versions have no power. Again, I can't tell for sure what version he was reading, but you have to have a King James Bible. That's what our founding fathers used. That's why America had the blessing of freedom given to it. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We had liberty here in America. Forget the you know prosperity and whatever else. A lot of that stuff was faked. It was you know the artificial debt created wealth. But the freedom that we've had here in America came because of the King James Bible. I have to say that. It's not whichever version you prefer. No, this one. This is the one that has over 99% of extant Greek manuscript support for the text of the New Testament. This is the one that God has used for 400 years. Best translation ever. Right? Very powerful Bible. If you don't have that, you have no power. Right? So again... He's taking away sound amplification devices. Okay, and another problem. If you're standing on a public sidewalk, you need to continue to move back and forth. That's another thing that you can learn if you are if you get into street preaching, which I have done in my past. You need to keep moving. That way you're not blocking. They can't come up and say you're impeding this, you know, public, uh, whatever they call the, the sidewalk there. You're staying on the sidewalk and you're moving. Okay, and you can use your Bible like this to make your voice sound louder or go like this and cup your hand. That helps to direct your voice better. But if you're using sound amplification stuff, then you're getting into you have to have a permit and all this other stuff. And there's no scripture for it. See, that's the problem here. Could they have come up and arrested him if he was not using sound ampli amplification type of stuff? I don't know. If they had, then you'd be dealing with a different case. But sound amplification puts you into a different legal situation. You shouldn't be doing that. Right? And uh, I saw this young guy interviewed, and you'll see here that the officer is trying to take the microphone, and he's he's like this, and he, and he says, I wasn't resisting arrest. I was tensing my muscle. They were trying to get it from you. Okay? And you were resisting. You'll see it. What are you doing? They said we can have. We he said, "You guys have been warned." This other police officer back here. He said, "You guys have been warned." Okay, so they're not showing the whole thing here. They've already been warned once. You don't have a right to just say, "Well, you know, I'll just I've been warned, but I'm just going to keep doing the thing that they warned me about, and then I won't get arrested. I have freedom of speech." Um, you get into all this legal little stuff. It's continue because they say we can speak out here on the sidewalk freely you can speak but there's no amplified device nobody told us that he said you can speak if there's no amplification device and see now he was not he's not uh letting go of the microphone so he is officially resisting what the police officer is telling him to do okay had there been no amplification device had they been moving back and forth on the sidewalk there wouldn't have been a problem you have to. You can't claim. Well, I have a freedom to do whatever I want. No, you don't. You have to know your rights and know how to do things the correct way. You have to understand that. The, well, how come there's no amplification? Hey, you guys are acting like thugs, man. You're acting like straight up thugs. Hey, you're 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 taking away my. Property. He has every right to be out here engaging in speech. He has every right to be out here engaging in speech. Engaging in speech but not with amplification. That's what is the legal problem here. That's why these police officers can take him off like that. There's cars driving by with their radios playing. That's amplified sound. People are standing out here with radios. That's amplified sound. The ordinance has to do with a decibel gauge. You don't just get to pick and choose which amplification you like and which you don't. That's selective enforcement of the law. That's discrimination on the basis of speech. No, it isn't. So, but, uh, you know, that's the problem. You say, well, well, look at you. You're just sitting there in your office. What are you doing? Well, let me show you something here. 
here's me right there this is years ago I was street preaching they called the police on me I'm not going to play the audio here uh, because I'm just I'm narrating saying what was going on and whatever else and saying why the CCM thing is wrong but uh, state police officer right here trooper Quint was his name and uh, another police officer pulls up he was a sheriff with the sheriff's office and um, you'll see him he comes walking up here to deal with the big uh, the criminal here you know me <laughs> uh, and so he comes walking up and then he'll come over here to my side you know they're doing this this movement um, where if there's a problem then they can take care of me as the you know guy or whatever see I have my Bible right there in my hands and I'm explaining I was I was basically saying that you know this is a residential area and I was saying that you know they're making all this noise and, and everything else and I said I'm living right over there I wouldn't do this and, and whatever and he said that they told him that they got a, a permit to do this rock concert thing across from us and I said and he said you know go down to the town office and complain about the permit thing and which I went down and it turned out they didn't get a permit they just did this thing without anybody's permission but uh, there I am, I'm talking, I'm speaking to him, making eye contact, I'm looking at him, if, you know, I'm being polite to him, explaining things, you know, you can see he's nodding his head, both guys are, are there and everything. I'm having a conversation, man to man, and this is not the first time that, it, and the only time that it happened. You know, it happened. I've been had police called on me a couple times, and I've had different run-ins with the police. I have never once been handcuffed. I've never once had any kind of thing go down to the station or whatever else because I handle it like a man, right? That's how the whole thing works. My wife was over on the camera there, so he gave me his card, and I said, you know, about I'd like to ask more questions, and I have other things I'd like to say and, and whatever, and he he wrote down. His contact information for me and you'll see here I take it I'll just let this play I guess see the Bible says in Romans chapter 13 that those men are ministers that they're supposed to do the law the physical law and I'm a minister a minister of the Lord Jesus Christ and I actually brought that point up with him by the way I said you know I respect your position as a minister of the law the Bible says in Romans chapter 13 that that's the way it's supposed to be. And I think if these people are doing things, it's unlawful. And, you know, and he said, well, you can check into that with the town office and go down. He said, I would go down, you know, as soon as they're open and check it out. And talk to the town about it. Like I said, they didn't even have a permit. So, um, just waiting here. You'll see me conclude the thing here in a minute. And I just said about, you know, what I was saying to him, too, is I said, I don't care if they do things in their building. I don't care. I'd have nothing to say. They can do whatever they want. But when you're pushing rock music on the rest of the neighborhood, then it's not respectful of the other neighbors in the, in the town. And that's all I was trying to say. Shook his hand. And shake that guy's hand, too. Did they take me away in handcuffs? No. They didn't take me away in handcuffs. Here I come, walking over, and there's the, this is the pastor of that charismatic cult building there. He's not even the pastor anymore. That whole thing fell apart, but whatever. Um, so there you can see, and he walks over and, and things, and because I had called the police because I was out, you know, preaching against what they were doing. And, um, you know, so I had... Uh, I even had a shirt on, t-shirt on, it said Ruger, <laughs> so I had a gun shoot on, shirt on. I wasn't prepared to do anything there, it's just I was in working on a sermon that day, and they start this insanely loud rock music up, which was just horrible, and um, and he said, we're going to let the, them continue, and so you know what I did? We got in the car, and we left, we went, we went tracking someplace else, that's what I did. Oh, I should have stayed there and I should have fought it. I should have gone over and I should have done things. They should. I should have been hauled off to prison. No. You know why? Because I'm following what the scriptures say. 
Mark chapter 6, verse 11, And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear you, when you depart thence, shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. People don't want to hear. I was saying, you know, this thing should be shut down. They should be told to stop and go someplace that's public, not just a residential area like this. And the officer said, well, they have a permit. The town gave them a permit, which they didn't. But I didn't know that at the time. And I said, okay, so you can't shut down? He said, no. And I said, okay, then I'm going to stop. I'm done. I'm leaving. And some pervert pride thing comes to an area or whatever else. And if you try to go out there and stop it as a street, street preacher and the police come and say, stop, you know, and you say, I'm not legally allowed to talk about it. No, you're not. Okay. Sorry, officer. I'm leaving. Let God do the judging. Right? This is activism. That's what this is. That's why a lot of the street preaching stuff, it's just to get people charged up and get people angry and whatever else. It's strife is what it is. And then you get these street preachers and they think that they're just these ultimate men of God because they've been persecuted so much. Um, it's fleshly. And I've seen that. So uh, please be careful of that stuff. But um, that's going to be it. Just wanted to make a little commentary thing on this. And there's a bunch of other videos, you know, Christians being arrested for, for reading the Bible or whatever else. Um, I've had, like I've said, I've had many run-ins with the police and I've never been arrested. I've never been handcuffed and taken to prison and whatever else because I speak like a man to them. Uh, to the young man in this video right here, um, learn to act like a man. Okay? And uh, make sure you're reading the King James Bible as well. That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.